Welcome back to the channel guys. Welcome to Chicago. We are in DuSable Harbor today and uh, it is a Friday. We are doing our weekly wash service. It's been a busy, uh, the season is just kicking off. It's uh, kind of getting in full swing. It's had a week of about 90 plus degrees here. So um, I wanted to take some time. I kind of wanted to bring it back to the basics today. Um, we've got some new hires that we start uh, have been training and started the last week and, and this week. And uh, as I'm going over the processes and talking over the, uh, you know, what makes us different kind of made me think, well, this is a perfect time to get a video and kind of go through the process with you guys. So um, let's step it all back to where it all be started, right? I've been a yacht captain now, it's been nine years. And outside of a yacht captain, I never saw myself being a yacht detailer, cleaner, maintenance and all of that. And I always figured, hey, there's so many people out there that do that, you know, I'm just another fish in the pond. But what I started realizing after some time is that there's so many other people out there, but not everyone does it the way that I think I would do it. So I spent some more time, took some more uh, care and thought and, and, and research into it. And then I decided, you know what, we're gonna start doing this ourselves. And it all expanded from there. Instead of hiring out a wash company, instead of doing the steps and processes and just kind of overseeing, I figured, well, if I had to go back and fix what the other company didn't do to my liking, I might as well do it to my liking from the beginning. So that's kind of how this all started and how we got to the point of Elevate Yacht Management and doing more than just captaining boats. So um, I thought as we've been doing this week, I've been, uh, we've got a couple new hires that have been starting. We're going through the training process and uh, we don't just hand them a brush and, and go say, you know, good luck. This is a, uh, we walk through the processes and walk through the steps to, to really get people to understand what we do and why it separates us from the rest of the pack. So with that said, I thought this is a perfect time to take a video today, walk you through our start to finish the weekly wash process. Now you guys might say, it's washing a boat, man. What the heck is uh, so special about washing a boat? Um, or, or what's so difficult? All it is is some soap, a hose and, and a brush. Uh, and at the most basic, it's probably pretty true. It's not all that difficult to clean a boat. However, I think there are steps and things that we take um, and some processes and uh, products that we use. So I just thought, hey, let's just walk through this. My guys are on the boat today. I thought I'd walk you through and let's, uh, let's just see the process uh, live in action, right? Uh, and uh, here we go. So when we get to a boat for the day, we're starting with a boat that's got window covers on, it's got seat cushion covers on, it has all of the uh, covers that might be already there. So we're gonna start by A, we start getting set up, we get our hoses lined up, and then we're gonna start by uh, first taking everything off. So we, we wipe off, we take off the seat covers, we take off the window covers, and we just start hosing and spraying everything down, okay? It's just gonna get any loose dirt anything that might be just kind of easily agitated, we're gonna kind of spray it off, which makes our job a little easier. Then we come, after we've gotten the seat cushions off, we will wash the seat cushions themselves. And additionally, we're gonna go underneath the seat cushions anytime any of these seats that are removable. We're gonna lift up and we're gonna get in these cracks. You see how there's dirt that collects in here? We're gonna get through all of this We'll get all that. So we're going to make sure we get all this dirt. We're going to we're going to look in hatches. Everything that we're looking for is what can be cleaned up and removed. So then we got areas like here or underneath these seats. We're gonna make sure that we scrub underneath and get all this stuff up underneath these seats because a clean boat only looks so clean until the client lifts up their back of their seat and sees bugs and dirt, and that's a failed wash on our end. So we make sure we're taking care of this type of stuff. Additionally, we're going in all the hatches. We're gonna lift these up. We're gonna spray these out. This is where a lot of stuff will, will get caught in here. Dirt sits in these drains. So we make sure we'll come through here, get all this cleaned out and drained out. 
All right, now that she's been washed, now we dry. We don't want to leave the, the water droplets to dry and cause hard water spots or anything like that. So we're going to go through and hand dry everything. We've got chamois towels and we've got chamois mops. Uh, we also use uh, just standard microfiber rags. So we're going to wipe everything down. And then we're gonna go through and do all the stainless steel and all of the windows so those are spotless too. So we'll wipe down the hull sides here when we're done. And while they're doing that, I thought I'd walk you through the uh, some of the tools and the uh, items that we use. It's just kind of, again, everything is, it, all you really need to clean a boat is a brush, a bucket, some soap. But why do we use certain things and what certain things do we use? Here we, I'll uh, walk you through them, here we go. So basic soap we're using. Uh, this I like is the Super Orange by Starbright. Now this is a, go ahead, share my reason. This is a pH neutral soap, so it's going to be giving us very minimal um, uh, stripping of any waxes or any other materials that are on the boat. Uh, going with a, you know, a heavy duty degreaser or cleaner is going to strip the boat uh, of any kinds of uh, waxes that might have been pre-applied. So instead, we're using a pH neutral. Now another version that we use um, is uh, Orpine. This label's been stripped off, but Orpine is another uh, boat wash that is uh, pH neutral and a good option, a good quality that we use. I like those. So to carry all this stuff, we're usually using some of these big buckets. This is a, I don't know, 15 gallon bucket from DeWalt, easy Home Depot. Um, but in here, we just have some of our other junk, right? So um, we'll get to, in a little bit, the windows, the spotless of the windows. We use a mixture. Um, we don't buy any kind of product for this other than this is just, this is a trade secret, so don't tell anyone. Vinegar, water. Two parts vinegar, one part water. It is killer on stainless steel and windows for spotless uh, spot removal, uh, water spot removal, uh, and just cleaning them up. It's a really, really good product uh, or, or mixture. Um, there are other products out there. Maybe they have some other fancy recipes in there that, that make them good, but uh, for a $2 mega jug at the Costco of vinegar and uh, some water, it's the cheapest uh, option that does a really good job. So I think it's a great option. We've got here an extendable, uh, elbow for washing the sides of the boat so when they're taking their brush and going down this is going to get you to clean the hull sides of the boat um, a nice little uh, nice little option there um, now let's talk a little bit about brushes this is a good example got a couple different brushes up here and why each of them are a bit different this is an old dirty brush that we're using for bilges right now, but this is the yellow brush. Uh, most of our, our Surehold brushes that we're using, but this is the stiffest, uh, some of the stiffest. There's a white version, white brush, uh, white colored, that is uh, the stiffest. And then we've got the yellow, which is also pretty darn stiff. You would use this on non-skid, uh, or again, now this is just a, a one we use for random cleanings, but non-skid. Uh, or something like that. You don't want to take a stiffer bristle brush to gel coat, a uh, nice smooth gel coat, or, and this boat is actually painted, so you don't want to take a, a something stiff to that um, because you want to take care of, of the coating and, and not add swirl marks or scratches. So that's where the opposite end is we use the blue brush here, which is very soft um, and just more so to just agitate any of the dirt and, and dust and debris, and then we spray it off. But uh, again, this is sure hold. Um, a blue brush. This one is a little worn, so we're not using this one today, but um, you can see them down in the dock. We got the newer ones. Now this is a good I'm interested. This is a good combo of the two. Now this is a the red bristle brush is a little softer. You can kind of see the ends are a little frayed. Um, they're meant to be a little less aggressive there. Um, but what you have is so if you're using this brush normally the red bristles are showing. But below there, the yellow bristles the yellow bristles are able to be, you know, if you push this brush down and kind of fan it out as you're scrubbing, you can then use the yellow bristles. So this would be good for also for non-skid. So if you're scrubbing then you push down a little more and your yellow bristles are working. So um, between these three, this is pretty much all you need. You could use a white one, um, 
again for non-skids for other areas that aren't soft uh, or flat gel coat or paint or anything like that um, you could use probably this on a teak you don't want to go too hard on a teak but you might want to scrub a little bit so that's a good option this is um, one of our drying chamois mops um, we've got one of the newer ones over there um, but these are really nice uh, now um, there you go. as I trip what I like personally I like these chamois rags um, this one is the absorber um, that we use and um, there's another purple rag that we use that they've got up there right now um, but these rags um, chamois are really good they suck up all the water um, wring it out and go right back at it so it's great for um, saving uh, you don't need to do laundry all day long with uh, a bunch of uh, microfiber rags or towels or anything like that but uh, anyways I like these a lot so we use these often um, additionally it's just one of our options a little again hose heads there's a million options out there you can pick whatever one you like um, honestly um, the ones I prefer have some sort of uh, multiple angles on it the uh, shower mist all that jazz um, so if you need a little more of a you know take it put it on full to uh, kind of agitate any of the dirt that might be in uh, a corner or an edge but then you use like a, a soft soaker or something to rinse uh, rinse the stuff off so that's another option there honestly this is gonna sound weird but bucket actually matters um, the kind of bucket that you use uh, in the sense that if you use too weak of a bucket and this is full of water and you go to lift it up and it's a very weak edged bucket you're gonna break it and crack it silly uh, little thing but also I like one that's got a pretty narrow base uh, if it's too wide you're not gonna be able to fit it along the edges the walkways of the boat so uh, just a thinner version here easy to carry around but also sturdy enough that it's not gonna fall apart on you um, this is the version of our uh, mop head that we use Additionally, microfiber rags are key, key, key. You want very soft microfiber rags. Now these are, these are the fancy uh, Elevate microfiber rags, but you do want good microfiber rags. So here's a perfect example of the buckets. So you can just ripped off. So we have to carry around this bucket as is for the moment, but this guy, is sturdy solid not going to bend and break so easy very difficult so all right so we're just finishing up last little bits of uh of spot drying and uh and a little dry, a little towel dries we're actually going to leave the covers off for this we have group messages for all of our clients and uh our client on this boat texted us this morning and said uh, when you do get there, please leave the covers off because it's a beautiful sunny day as you can see and it's going to use the boat for the weekend. So uh, perfect timing. But what we're doing next is we are going into the engine room to do our weekly engine room checks. So checking the oil, um, checking the coolant, bilge pumps, strainers, um, looking for any abnormal, abnormal, abnormalities or any of that kind of stuff. So we will do that as well. Well, I just talked through a five minute video clip and realized it was on time warp. So that will be a, an interesting looking time warp. But uh, I am back off the phone finally. And um, now that my guys are off this boat, the boys have now gone to the next boat. Not this one here, but one over. So now we're starting to wash uh, the next boat here. We've got three or four boats in this harbor alone that we wash and, and many in the other harbors. So um, what I didn't get to earlier is the process of with your hose spraying and just making again these are little things that doesn't sound like like much but you want to start at the top of the boat where this is a coop and the boat over there is a flybridge so you want to start at the top of the boat spraying and cleaning and then it's all your water is rushing downward um, the dirt is going down because if you wash the lower level first and then went to the upper level to spray you're you're kind of negating what you just did on the lower level so little stuff like that and then on a boat like this where you see the water is going or the and kind of the, the walkway goes downward if you stay up here and you spray down this way the water is going to run that way so you kind of work with uh, the the angles of the boat find out where the uh, uh, the drains are and spray that direction versus having to kind of go backwards and fight up fight uphill or anything else so what i was talking about with the water flow right so you've got water flow 
you see some dirt you step in you step on the dock and come back you get dirt all over the place so if i'm going to spray it see how the water's flowing this way i'm not going to try to sit back there and spray this way because it's going to be going uphill so we're just work with the flow of the water rock it down now it goes down a step continue going down and it's going down into a drain area so we're letting it flow all the way down there and what we do we see how underneath inside that drain there's little ugly dirt spots we're going to pick up this drain and we're going to clean under here because now all of that will be gone too so all the little stuff like that that we're trying to find and identify other thing that i didn't i forgot to tell you another product that i really like this thing this thing was a game changer is the shoes these shoes these are uh, vesi v-e v-e-s-i shoes check this out Bone dry. That's when you're washing in in water all day, and you've got uh, your feet are getting wet, and then you're just uncomfortable all day. Or if it's freezing cold out in the April when we're washing boats, keeps your feet cold, dry and warm. It's amazing. So uh, kudos to these guys for a pretty legit shoe. Um, it's a season long, and uh, they've been doing good for me. Cole's got Ons over here. He likes those waterproof shoes. He was. Uh, talking smack about my shoes but uh, either way I think that uh, is another little perk and a tip for you waterproof shoes in the detailing business is a big deal so anyways we're done with this boat now we've washed it we went in the engine room we checked the engine room as I mentioned we left the covers off for this gentleman because um, he said he's coming back to the boat so they're gonna be using the boat for the weekend so we left the covers off otherwise we would obviously we take all the covers off to start the wash but then we put them back on when we're done so we want to leave the boat clean and then in case they don't get here for the next day or two you don't have birds partying on their back patio or anything so anyways i'll walk you through now that we've done all this and you know what i forgot trusty rag now this is uh the final step that we do again we've gone through everything we've dried we've done the stainless steel we've done the windows We've gone over everything and the boat looks very, very good, but we'll do final touch-ups, looking over for last little bits of stuff. Uh, again, people say, you know, oh, you, you, might, you might charge a little more than, than the other guy for a wash uh, service or, it's very dark in here. We don't rush through a wash. It doesn't take us 30 minutes to wash a 50-foot boat. It takes us about an hour or so and we're going through the steps very carefully because we want to make sure that every little bit is, is, is covered. All right, so now that we're doing the back checks, we'll just walk through and we're just looking for other little things, right? So again, like these hatches that we did, we talked about earlier, we showed you. So now we went through and got all the dirt and debris from underneath here. We went underneath the seats and got all that dirt and debris that was under there. So we're just looking for any little spots like that. We're, you know, water spotting, removal of even the stainless on your fridges so again you're looking for that clean final look you want these windows to be mirror finish you don't want to be finding ugly spots all over it so that's just some of the little stuff that we want to do at the end so the final steps are walking through the clean rag I'm just looking at little stuff you know little things that are going to drive me crazy but you know we went from a dusty hazy boat from the start of the day chicago reflection in the background to a nice clean good looking option and we've covered this back up so the owner's not going to be taking the boat out he's going to be sitting around the back of it hanging out so we'll cover up the seats here all these areas we looked at this spot earlier so we leave it nice and clean all the dirt and debris out of there a little bit of residual water sitting in there so we just go back little stuff right at the end So, again, process of washing a boat, it's not all that hard. It's just 
attention to detail and using the right products that aren't going to negate a wax or a, wa uh, or a ceramic or anything like that that you might have on there. So now that we have a nice pretty clean boat ready, opened up and ready for the client to come out and enjoy the day uh, and the weekend, um, now we're done. We're done. I feel confident that the boat looks good, the boat feels good. They're ready to go. They're going to be pleased with their weekly wash. We take a picture of the boat. We send them a picture and say, thank you for your business. Here is your clean boat. Have a great weekend. So little stuff that we do. Uh, again, cleaning a boat itself is not all that hard. You just take some soap. You take some materials, some brushes and a hose, and you clean it. But it's the few extra little steps that we take, the few things that we try to do act differently, and a couple of the products. So I hope the video might have helped you show you some of the different products that we use. Um, steps that we take and uh, and in general just uh, what we look at what we look for when we're doing our boat cleaning so anyways thank you for sticking around uh, for the video again as always I appreciate you guys continuing to uh, to stick around to watch the videos comment like share all the stuff that you do so thank you for that um, anything else that I can help you with again always put it in the comments below happy to uh, give tips pointers or uh, any details about any of the products that we use or things that I like, have tried, have not tried, I'm take your suggestions too. So keep them coming. Thank you for sticking around. Hope you have a great weekend. Cheers.